Dr. Lee Linio. Mr. Speaker, sir, I stand to support the motion raised by Minister for Health. The Eldership Review is overdue and thus the newly enhanced scheme, now called Cash Alive, is indeed welcome. I feel that with Cash Alive in place, our government has completed the provision of the basic safety net for long-term care for all Singaporeans, especially with regard to their health care. This is taken together with the implementation of Medicine Alive as well as with our existing MediSafe and Medifund schemes. This will give many Singaporeans peace of mind on their health care and long-term care needs. I first spoke on Elder Shield in May 2002, several months before its implementation. In fact, this is the 12th time I speak in this house on this topic. Before its implementation in 2002, I already raised the concern over its inadequacy in its payout of $300 and its tenure of payment of five years. This payout was upgraded with another $400 version subsequently. Those individuals with three ADLs, which are washing, dressing, feeding, going to the toilet, walking and transferring, such as moving from a bed to chair and vice versa, are totally dependent on others for their daily living. In fact, Minister Gan Kim Yong himself asked in this house, in this chamber in 2002, on the reasons for citizens opting out of Elder Shield at the time, whether it was because of the $300 payout or because of the difficulty in qualifying for the payout with the three ADLs. Today, I still want to raise the same concern that a $600 payout in the year 2020 will still be inadequate. Moreover, this amount will remain flat without adjustments to inflation after start of claim. In the context of Singapore, with increasing smaller families and dual income families, caring for the severely disabled family members at home is usually with the help of domestic helpers. The payout of $600 will be inadequate for this domestic help, let alone paying for other hefty expenses such as medical equipment, higher medical costs, physiotherapy, etc. The latter are usually required by the severely disabled individuals. While I understand that keeping the premium of the cash in life affordable is necessary, the adequacy and usefulness of cash in life are just as important. In this context, I feel that three out of six ADLs for payout are too onerous. Two ADLs criteria would have been a better proposition. The reason is that those with just two ADLs alone like inability to feed or to go to the toilet would already need full-time assistance. Even the loss of just one ADL can already make significant impacts on one's life in mobility and in income. My concern is that with lesser cash shield life for those with two ADLs, their families may take the option of sending their dependent family members to community hospitals or letting them overstay in acute hospitals, resulting in higher burdens in the end for the families and for the government. May I ask, Minister, whether Cash Your Life can allow the purchase of riders with higher premiums for those who want to have better peace of mind and opting for one or two ADLs instead of three ADLs? This is a better option than going to private insurers that will never be like the not-for-profit government policy proclaimed for cash life. Presently, Eldershield has a relative low claims to premiums ratio outcome. The annual premium is around $206 million with all plows, while the payout amount is about $8.32 million. The number of claimants last year was in the region of 1,750. 
Considering the disability prevalence rate presently of about 5% for those 65 years and above, it means that there are already some 15,000 pe people requiring aged care facility per year. Could Minister give an explanation for the low number of claimants? Is the main reason being the three ADLs eligibility as too onerous? Could it also be that the claiming process had been made difficult? Many people had lamented that they forgot to claim Elder Shield. For those who tried to claim Elder Shield, the process was daunting in filling up forms and looking for assessors. There are presently only 120 GPs who are the certified assessors. I want to declare that I'm not one of them. I'm glad that under Cash Alive, there will be an increased pool of assessors to include occupational therapies, physiotherapies and nurses. May I ask MOH to ensure that the assessment process be simplified with consistencies and conformity so that to enable assessors to give equitable assessments to all patients. Assessors had given feedback that presently the grading levels for each activity of daily living can be quite small and slight, making it hard to assess the patients. Other feedback includes requests for assessment forms to be made more user-friendly. Stroke patients are often struck with severe disability. Will it be onerous for such patients to claim for cash life? And how soon after being afflicted can such patients claim? It's been reported that private insurers collected some $2.6 billion in premiums for Elder Shield and only about $133 million have been paid out in claims. In 2020, government will take over the coverage. Thus, there's no risk for the private insurers for future claims. May I ask, Minister, about the underwriting arrangements with private insurers and especially on the return amount of all the surplus premiums, including interest and investments income to MOH. There is a difference in premium payments between men and women with cash alive. What well, I can understand that women live longer I feel that there can be better inclusiveness and fairness. My concern is that women may have lesser means to pay for premiums compared to men. M women are earning less due to family commitments and may have even lesser savings to spare with increasing age. I welcome the provision for people who are disabled at the age of 30 years to join and to receive payouts immediately after paying for one premium. This reflects the inclusive society that we aspire to build. But I'm certain that this idea of inclusive society does not extend to gender equity by requiring women to pay higher premiums for cash life. I hope Minister may consider on this one. So those older Singaporeans especially those above 67 years, will have to pay very high premiums for cash in life. Many will not be able to afford the premiums. What kind of assistance is available to assist those not covered under cash in life, being struck with severe disability and have financial difficulty? May I ask if IDEP or I DAPE will still be available with the cessation of elder seal in 2020. So for many severely disabled individuals, they prefer to be cared for in the familiar comfort of their own homes and with their families. I feel that MOH needs to develop home care and community care presently very scarce as quickly as possible to cater for our fast escalating need to help severely disabled people remain in their own homes. The other options of long-term care apart from home care and community care are care in the nursing homes, community hospitals, as well as day care and palliative care centers. While we address the financial issue of long-term care with the implementation of cash life, 
It is vital to continue providing the infrastructure for long-term care for the severely disabled who need institutional care. Of course, daycare centers and nursing homes will have to be increased in number and in quality. And I hope M that MOH will also provide humane palliative care with better support and services. So I'd like to conclude that severe disability very often results from complications of chronic diseases. Thus, as a strong advocate of preventive medicine myself, may I beseech MOH to endeavor fullest to assist Singaporeans to keep healthy and to prevent chronic diseases and to have good control of chronic diseases should they have them. Thus, will MOH consider incentives for example, premium discount tied to our insurance schemes, cash alive and medical life, to nudge or to motivate people to achieve better health and to keep chronic diseases at bay. Thank you.